Well, that was about as good of a day as you could possibly want from the bull side. My name is Hamilton. I'm here with the Trading Initiative. Let's talk about today's close, April 29th, 2024. All last week, we were talking about the fact that market breadth had been improving. Internals were improving. Stocks above the 50 and the 200-day moving average were improving. More new net highs than lows. Equal weighted S&P 500 in the queues showing progress. We're not out of the woodwork yet, but some very good stuff is happening underneath the surface that translated today into some of the MAG7 stocks. MAG7 stocks as a group actually finished up partly because of the strength of Tesla. But that's not what I want to talk about. In this quick video, I want to talk about the fact that bonds stopped going down. Guys, cannot tell you how friggin' important this is. When the bond market stops going down, the equity market tends to rally. The bonds don't need to be bought. They do not need to necessarily be in an uptrend, although we potentially could be starting to form a bottom, in, which might turn into a short-term uptrend. I have no idea if that's it. But bonds have not gone down now for three sessions in a row. We have a little bit of a hidden divergence here in TLT, which is your 20-plus year bond ETF. The momentum into the lows did not follow the new lows in price. That is a hidden bullish divergence within momentum telling you that maybe this is a pretty good opportunity for the market to reverse back to the upside. Now, does this turn into something bigger? I have no idea. But we noticed this last week and it's continuing to play out this week. So I'm telling you, once again, if bonds stop being sold off, the market tends to rally. That's exactly what we saw today in the indexes. The S&P 500 is now up off of that last Friday low. So two Fridays ago, 3%. The Qs are up even more off of that Friday low, that close up for 4.5%. And these are just the non-equal weighted ETFs. If we go and we look at some of the equal weighted stuff off of the floor last Friday, we're up 3.73% in QQEW. And if we go to the equal weighted S&P 500 off of that Friday close, we're up 2.74%. This is a total market move. Check out small caps. Small caps are testing the 200 area. That's kind of our Line in the sand for whether or not we want to add exposure into smalls and mids. After bottoming out a week and a half ago, we've started to rally back up. Now, once again, I want to point out, we're not entirely sure this is it. Right? It could be it. We're moving in that direction. We are adding exposure. We bought some things today. We do have FOMC on Wednesday. We have a slew of earnings that we are currently holding through this week. So we're not buying everything under the sun, but we're buying regularly for the first time in about the last three weeks, four weeks, realistically. We have not bought anything for like two and a half, three weeks. We're starting to buy stuff now. Things are starting to change here. Look at the RSI and IWM. If we go ahead and get the indicator tiles open, that's 50.51. You know, if you're in TTI, if you follow our content, we like the RSI above the 50. If we start buying IWM, the RSI is now above 50. Now we want to match that with a move above the $200 price level, but still this is a step in the right direction. The Qs, the RSI is 50.48 and we're starting to break back up. Spy, we look at the RSI here, 51.68. Once again, not necessarily saying that was it, but what I'm saying is momentum to the downside is now faltering. So if bears want to make a stand, this is pretty much where they need to make it, at least from a technical standpoint. The RSI momentum indicators have reset. We're now starting to cross back up over the 50. Bears are losing momentum. You have some catalysts this week with the FOMC on Wednesday, and you have some large, uh, some of the mega cap stocks which are reporting. I think Amazon reports tomorrow, and then Apple reports on Thursday. So there's definitely some events that could continue to capitulate the market. But over the last like seven sessions, the market has caught a bomb and has started to rise back up. If we look at some of the bigger stocks that sold off like crazy post earnings, JP Morgan has completely filled its gap, right? These are big boy moves. This is not a small stock. As a matter of fact, financials continue to look good. Energy continues to look good. Tech is starting to look pretty good. That Apple position we put on last week is up around 50% already. We bought down here in the circle, up 50%. Not saying we're out of the woodwork yet, but I'm saying that things are starting to turn the corner a little bit here. Obviously, the big move today was Tesla. Check out the Tesla gap. That helps the non-equal weighted indexes, particularly consumer discretionary, which is XLY. Look at that big gap up. This is a two-year high up here. All you need is Tesla and Amazon moving in the same direction, and all of a sudden, you have a very large portion of the market pushing back to the upside. Once again, I need to continue to say, I'm not sitting here saying that was the bottom. What I'm telling you, though, is things are not as bad as what most people are saying, right? And we are starting to buy. If that was the bottom, 
Let's pretend the market gaps up post Wednesday's FOMC event. We just got a hell of a head start on a group of great positions that we can add into strength. We have profit cushion. If for whatever reason the market doesn't like what comes out on Wednesday and we start gapping back down and threatening new lows, it's a relatively small risk that we're taking right now. So I feel comfortable adding exposure here with some of the stuff that we see aligning in the, the bull's favor, right? Last thing I want to point out a little tongue in cheek here is everybody talks about how bad the consumer is right now. Everybody's going broke. Nobody's paying the credit card bills. And yet for some reason, American Express breaking out into all-time highs. As a matter of fact, hit our price target late last week. Last one I want to point out, though, Goldman Sachs, all-time high. Guys, I don't know about you guys, but if the market was really as bad as what people are saying and the consumer is dead and the banking sector is about to fail, can you tell me why some of the largest banks are breaking out into all-time highs? Kind of makes you wonder, maybe you should have a position. Guys, my name is Hamilton. I'm here with The Trading Initiative. If you like these type of videos, I would highly encourage you to please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Was two Fridays ago the bottom? Are we on a course back to all-time highs? Or is the Amazon earnings tomorrow, Apple earnings on Thursday, and FOMC on Wednesday going to slap us back down? Let me know. Catch you tomorrow.